Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash today I fucked up. But first, let's play r slash drunk or a kid, where I give you a real life scenario and you guess whether it was a drunk or a kid. This one was posted by Captain Carrot. I was being chased by some people and managed to run right off a cliff, dropped 30 feet and somehow broke no bones, walked home, threw up, and passed out. But what do we think? Was this a drunk or a kid? Find out at the end of the video. Now back to our slash today I fucked up where Slow Cauliflower posted this. Today I fucked up by taking Ambien for a good night's rest and getting forcibly escorted to the ER. This happened three weeks ago but I have been too mortified to post it yet. Content warning. This story could be triggering for some folks as it alludes to drug use and mental illness, though it is not a serious topic as my stupidity is the only tragedy here. My mother and I are both prescribed Ambien for insomnia. Ambien, the notorious sleeping pill that makes people hallucinate tiny robot armies in their rooms and go on racist tirades on Twitter. Thankfully, I've only had some funny, some cringy, some regretful experiences on this medicine, but in the five years I've taken it, I'd never done anything truly cringeworthy. Until now. Three weeks ago finds us the weekend before Thanksgiving, and as we lay in cute Saturday morning cuddles ordering some breakfast, I discovered my long-term partner had a Tinder. After kicking him out of the apartment, I was living alone going through the roller coaster of emotional scorned women, and as someone with anxiety induced insomnia, this triggered a lot of sleepless nights. Now, I'm prescribed the absolute lowest dose of slow release Ambien. I've had a history of it not working if I've eaten recently or been too anxious to sleep. Either the drug would not work, or I'd find myself wide awake and very loopy. I brought this up with my PCP who refused to raise the dose. So, if I needed to sleep, I would take two to sleep. In hindsight, this is the first fuck up. Flash forward to this post-infidelity scorned woman electric boogaloo during Covid shutdowns and grad school finals and the holidays. My stress is at an all time high and I'm not sleeping well no matter what I do. On the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I take my first dose of Ambien around 8pm, hoping to get a good night's rest before seeing a friend the next day. No luck. 9pm rolls around and all I feel is mildly high and wide awake. I take a second pill. 9.30. Still wide awake, but getting slightly loopy. I decide to take a third. After taking it, I realise I should really be careful and look up the safe dosage on these. I don't want to overdose, so I pull out my phone and try to Google. If you've ever typed stuff out under the influence of Ambien, you will know that things start to get weird here. Everything is in a dreamlike state. Keyboard visuals get blurry and move. Nothing really seems strange or bothers you. So what do I do to make sure I don't accidentally overdose on Ambien? I type into Google. How much Ambien to overdose? Strangely, the results I'm getting do not tell me how much Ambien is too much, just vaguely references to its danger. And in my ambien state, this is mildly frustrating. Why won't the wise, wise Google tell me this crucial information I need? But then I see it, a big orange button on the top of the screen, right under my search bar. It says, call here for help. Suddenly, my loopy, hypnotic prayers have been answered. Hooray! I am in need of help. Perhaps this friendly orange button leads to poison control or a friendly doctor hotline of a sort who can help me with my question. My walls are also shimmering and I'm convinced my plants are telepathically talking to me, but that wasn't the main focus right then. I press the help button and my phone begins calling a number. I hear an automated voice and I'm not too sure what it says. But then a woman answers and asks me how I'm doing. She sounds very kind and concerned. It is important to note that Ambien is technically not a sleeping drug, 
but a hypnotic. This is why people under its influence tend to not question things too much and are not greatly bothered by the out of the ordinary, because nothing really seems too out of the ordinary. It is also important to note that I did not, in fact, call poison control or the helpful doctor people as I had so dreamily believed. No. In all my infinite ambient wisdom, I had called the National Suicide Hotline. I'll keep it straightforward from here. The nice lady asked me questions about myself and how I was doing. I said, fine. I was just trying to go to sleep and wanted to know how much Ambien was safe to take. She asked me how much I'd already taken. I told her. Then she asked me if I lived alone. And to my mild embarrassment, I began crying due to the fact I was freshly alone. This was the second fuck up. But I say, I am okay. I'm just trying to get some good sleep. We hang up eventually. The memories are pretty murky. She keeps asking me if I was sad about my partner, which annoyed me. Asked me if I wanted to keep living, which I said, of course. But as I'm settling into bed, my mother calls from four states away, asking why the hometown police are at her door at 11 p.m. before Thanksgiving to do a wellness check on their suicidal daughter. Thankfully, my mother knows ambient antics quite well. And after me explaining the situation, hearing my strange whacked out speech, and having a good laugh, she's able to get the cops to go away satisfied. I hang up and start drifting off. And then there is a knock at my door. Unsatisfied with our phone call, the suicide hotline sent a team of EMS and cops to my apartment to bring me to the hospital in an ambulance for an involuntary psychiatric eval. Through my ambient fever dream, I'm trying to explain to the cops that this is all a misunderstanding while also madly hallucinating and swaying while walking because my balance is gone. EMS goes through my cabinets, finds my prescription bottle, see it's emptier than it should be due to having to double up and haul my delirious and sleepy ass into a five minute ambulance ride to the nearest ER where I try to explain myself to doubtful nurses that I am not suicidal before absolutely conking out on a gurney under preventative watch. About four hours later, a med resident came in to do my psyche vow, and after deciding that though I was a woman scorned with bad insomnia, I was indeed not at risk to myself or others, asked me how the hell I ended up in the ER. I explained myself the best I can, and the poor guy has to apologise he's laughing so hard. A quick phone call with my poor mother confirms my story, and I am released into the night. I insisted I wanted to go home and not stay until morning where I stumble around and manage to charge my dying phone at a nearby police station and then find an Uber home. All in all, I arrive back in my apartment around four in the morning and make a strong cup of stress relief tea before crashing on the couch and praying I wouldn't remember this when I woke up. Moral of the story, I am looking at non-prescription insomnia treatments. If you or a loved one are struggling with Ambien or other drug dependency, I highly recommend looking into resources to help you in whatever way you need. Ambien can be a hell of a habit forming drug and don't wait till you pull a stupid ass stunt of my level to realise it's time to kick it. Too long, it didn't read. Took a higher dose of Ambien than usual, tried to call poison control while hallucinating, but accidentally called the National Suicide Hotline. Edit. Please don't take this as an inspiration to recreationally try Ambien. I had been trying to shake it off for months, but this was the moment that made me flush them all down the toilet the morning I woke up. Nothing like pure mortification and a hefty bill to inspire you to quit. Down in the comments, Gothstock had this to say. I had a girlfriend who took Ambien. Sometimes I'd get up in the morning to find her passed out on the sofa with dozens of empty American cheese wrappers scattered around her like confetti. She'd be just as confused as I was. Had a boyfriend put on Ambien and start rapidly gaining weight. He was a professional chef, so I just thought he was taste testing more than he used to. When he swore he wasn't, we both were confused. Until one morning, I found teeth marks in a block of cheese. He was sleep eating. Weird shit. Man, that stuff sounds crazy. 
In the UK, they rarely prescribe actual sleeping pills, and when they do, they only give them to you for a short period of time. I'd seriously recommend anyone taking this shit to try something else. Visualization, guided meditation, warm milk, proper bedtime routine, anything but this. Now back to r slash drunk or a kid. So who was the person who fell 30 feet and didn't break a bone? It was... A kid! I was an eight or nine year old kid playing family tig at a disused quarry near my home. My parents were not impressed. Did you guess right? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you have heard, Please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss anything from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow!